Well, hello there, City Church family, and I want to welcome you to day two in this video series that I'm going to be filming every single day until the end of this corona uh, virus epidemic. As you can tell, my son Peter is with me, and we're going to be sort of having a dialogue through the different passages of Scripture that the devotional highlights. So the text that you've already read today is the text that kind of deals with two things. It deals with the end of Jesus' trial, and then it picks up with Peter denying Jesus three times. And so in the midst of that, I trust that you've already read it, and then Peter's going to kind of give us the bigger arc of Scripture and where we're at at this moment. Yeah, I think it can be important as we journey through Scripture chronologically. A lot of times we don't read a whole book all the way through. But if you're following this reading plan, you're following the story of Jesus um, episode by episode all the way through to his resurrection. And so I think as we think about interpreting this story and the importance that this story has for us, it's really important to remember where it comes in the Bible. Uh, so biblical scholars talk about six acts of scripture. And this is the whole of the Bible split up into six major parts. So part one is creation, and then fall, and then Israel, Jesus, the church, and the last bit, which some people in academic terms call the eschaton, which is the Greek word for the end. But it's the moment at which God brings together uh, the new heavens and the new earth, when the new Jerusalem comes out of the sky. It's that final moment of hope. Um, in creation, we learn that God loves his creation and that God has made creation for a purpose. And in the story of the fall, we learn that creation has somehow managed to turn away from God and to tell God no and to deny the purposes God's made for it. In the story of Israel, we see God's, the beginning of God's story of trying to call creation back to himself. And in the story of Jesus, we have the climactic moment in which God finally by coming to us in the form of a human, finishes the work of salvation that we require. In the story of the church, we have the outworking of humans to spread that redemption to the world. And in the final story, Acts 6, redemption complete sometimes it's called, or the eschaton, we have this moment at which all of God's struggling is over and it's finally accomplished. Everything in the world is set to right. And so the stories that we're reading for these next two weeks come from a really pivotal moment in that massive six acts of scripture. It's a dark but a key moment, and that's the crucifixion, the trial and crucifixion of Jesus. This is the moment where the God who's been trying to redeem the world gives his life in order to try and save the world. And so episode by episode, I think a question we can constantly be asking is like, what is God doing here? And why is it that such difficult things are required to save the world that God loves? All right, kind of the smaller arc of scripture that is important to us in this moment is that Jesus has been predicting one huge thing, and that is, is that he would be turned over to the Gentiles and to some of the Jewish leaders, and he would be executed. We see that this is now beginning. And then at the Last Supper, he predicted three things. One of them is that Judas would leave him. One of them, other things was that Peter would betray him. And then the final thing was that all the disciples would exit and abandon him. So kind of an increasing measure, he would be betrayed by the people that are closest to him. So what we're going to focus on now is we're going to focus on the denial of Peter and him kind of being in front of a fire barrel. Someone confronts him about who Jesus is and he denies him. And it's important to realize that the story before Jesus has asked who he is in front of the Sanhedrin and he is faithful to state who he is and to hold course with that where now Peter denies that profession of faith and he's now exiting Jesus. Yeah, so um, if you look at the big sweep of this chapter, there's one commentator <clears throat> on this uh, story who talks about Jesus is, all, all of this story, it looks like Jesus is on trial, but really everybody who's trying Jesus are actually the ones whose character is being revealed. So he says that Jesus' arrest in chapter 26, verse 47, that's the trial of Rome. And then we have this trial before the Sanhedrin, and that's really the trial of the religious leaders. And now we've got this moment where Peter is sort of in his own weird way, not literally, but maybe metaphorically on trial. Um, so while Jesus is before the Sanhedrin, Peter is outside in a courtyard warming his hands. 
And um, there's this little historical fact that I think helps illustrate the drama of what's going on here. Uh, in, in ancient Jewish law or in Jewish law of this period, it's illegal um, to condemn somebody to death at night. You need a second gathering the next day. And that's precisely what has not happened in Jesus's trial. But there's also a belief um, or this thought in Talmudic literature at this period that someone can still come to court to defend somebody before the, the next morning of their trial. So court is open through the night. And the, the next day starts when the rooster crows. And so what we have here is Peter effectively debating whether he should go into the courtroom, because he's out in the courtyard, whether he should go into the courtroom and defend Jesus. And he takes so long denying Jesus in the courtyard that that last moment when he could go in and help him, which is when the rooster crows, is when he goes to weep. And so what we see is actually one of Jesus' closest disciples leaves him at the last moment. And I think on this side of the cross, um, that's about as tragic as it gets. The resurrection will have things to say about this. Absolutely. But right now, what we have is Jesus on trial, falsely condemned, and then we even find out that his disciples did not have the faithfulness or the commitment or the faith or the courage required to actually follow him. Everything is falling apart. And so that kind of sets the final stage for this devotional. But I think one of the ways to sort of put feet to our faith is ask ourselves this question. These same hard questions are now being asked today. Who is Jesus and am I willing to follow him? And in my opinion, pastorally, Peter, I think you'd agree, that the answer to that question is becoming more and more difficult, but it's also becoming more and more important because the world in which we live truly needs the hope of Christ. So God bless you and have an awesome rest of the day.